I don't know if I like Tucker Carlson. I mean, in the past I haven't. But just my saying, oh, I don't know if I like him or not, upsets some people. I'm supposed to treat him with the utmost disdain for some of his views. Views that I don't agree with myself. When I watch Tucker, or when I have in the past anyway, I take into consideration his potential biases. It's quite possible to extrapolate something significant or real from a biased source. You just have to process it the right way. You have to look at it knowing that this is this person's bias, or this organization's bias, or whatever. If it's a newsworthy subject, there are probably a lot of other sources you should probably look at to get a more well-rounded perspective on it. Anyway, I try to look past people's faults to see some of the good things. Sometimes there are a few good things, sometimes there's a lot of good things, but I try to look for them anyway. Tucker does occasionally say some things that I agree with, but I don't know whether he actually believes the things that I agree with him on, you know, in what he's said on his show. Tucker poses himself as a populist, standing up for the little guy. I say poses because I simply don't know if it's true. There's some old footage of him, I mean, over a decade ago, of him saying some things that would lead you to believe that, uh, yeah, he's kind of an elitist himself. So, so are the things that he said that I agree with, are those actually from Tucker himself? Is it from the staff at Fox News, the writers or whatever at Fox News? Or is it something else? The very things Tucker is about to warn us about are things that he's done himself. Let's watch. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. You often hear people say the news is full of lies, but most of the time that's not exactly right. Much of what you see on television or read the New York Times is in fact true in the literal sense. It could pass one of the media's own fact checks. Lawyers would be willing to sign off on it. In fact, they may have, but that doesn't make it true. It's not true. At the most basic level, the news you consume is a lie, a lie of the stealthiest and most insidious kind. Facts have been withheld on purpose, along with proportion and perspective. You are being manipulated. How does that work? Let's see. If I tell you that a man has been unjustly arrested for armed robbery, that is not, strictly speaking, a lie. He may have been framed. At this point, there's been no trial, so no one can really say. But if I don't mention the fact that the same man has been arrested for the same crime six times before, am I really informing you? No, I'm not. I'm misleading you. And that's what the news media are doing in every story that matters, every day of the week, every week of the year. Tucker has omitted things from many of his broadcasts. He paints a picture that none of the other mainstream outlets would dare to paint. He gives a perspective that is usually not allowed. But it's biased, extremely biased. Having said that, I don't really have a problem with someone being biased. I mean, provided I understand what that bias actually is or have a reasonable understanding of what that bias actually is. I would prefer it if I was able to understand the biases of all news commentators. To me, it shows authenticity. I think it would be awesome if there was a news channel that went out of its way to make sure that they have as many people with as many different types of biases as possible on their, on their schedule. You know, drop this whole idea that someone can be just completely unbiased un unless they're just reporting on straight facts. But, I mean, as, as Tucker has said in his little clip, and many people have asked, if facts are being omitted, what information are you taking in? Anyway, his video continues. What's it like to work in a system like that? After more than 30 years in the middle of it, we could tell you stories. The best you can hope for in the news business at this point is the freedom to tell the fullest truth that you can. But there are always limits. And you know that if you bump up against those limits often enough, you will be fired for it. That's not a guess. It's guaranteed. Every person who works in English language media understands that. The rule of what you can't say defines everything. It's filthy, really, and it's utterly corrupting. You can't have a free society if people aren't allowed to say what they think is true. Speech is the fundamental prerequisite for democracy. That's why it's enshrined in the first of our constitutional amendments. Amazingly, as of tonight, there aren't many platforms left that allow free speech. The last big one remaining in the world, the only one, is Twitter, where we are now. 
Now, I imagine that some people will want to stop it right there and declare that Twitter is not a free speech platform. Well, I mean, there will never be a true free speech platform. There will always be rules, and there will always be disproportionate and unequal enforcement of those rules. With Twitter, it's all about how reasonable or restrictive the rules are. You know, what is it that allows for the most speech? And I think Twitter is doing a good job at that. Not perfect. It's not a perfect free speech platform. That's not even possible. And yes, Twitter, as it is seen in other countries, is being restricted via the laws they have, and Twitter is trying to follow the laws uh, of those places, at least for the way that those places see Twitter. Elon said from the beginning that he would abide by that. Fortunately, here in the United States, because of our freedom of speech, our version of Twitter will reign supreme. You know, at least as far as free speech anyway. It's the closest to it you're going to get. If a bunch of people leave Twitter because they can't stand seeing opinions from people they don't like, that's not Twitter kicking them off. It is people leaving Twitter, though. For many people like that, the principle isn't what allows for the most speech. It's what allows the most correct speech. And they think their side should be the arbiters of what is correct and just. They want the site to allow for punching up only essentially using the progressive stack to decide what is punching up. And this is what Twitter was becoming more and more like until Elon bought it. And I'm very thankful for it. Important discussions are happening. Twitter has long served as the place where our national conversation incubates and develops. Twitter is not a partisan site. Everybody's allowed here, and we think that's a good thing. And yet, for the most part, the news that you see analyzed on Twitter comes from media organizations that are themselves thinly disguised propaganda outlets. You see it on cable news. You talk about it on Twitter. The result may feel like a debate, but actually the gatekeepers are still in charge. We think that's a bad system. We know exactly how it works, and we're sick of it. Starting soon, we'll be bringing a new version of the show we've been doing for the last six and a half years to Twitter. We bring some other things too, which we'll tell you about. But for now, we're just grateful to be here. Free speech is the main right that you have. Without it, you have no others. See you soon. So this makes me wonder how long of videos Elon will allow on Twitter. An hour? Two hours? Can Twitter become a significant competitor to YouTube when it comes to a thought-provoking, uh, esoteric, uh, political-type content? Will Elon finally open up spaces so people on regular computers can actually join in on the conversation instead of just listening? And will he expand it so people can have video on spaces? That would be pretty cool, too. It would be kind of like StreamYard. Anyway, I look forward to seeing what Tucker does on Twitter. On the rare occasion I actually watched Fox News, it was usually to see some controversial take that, that Tucker had. You know, I just didn't watch, I mean, I don't watch much news anyway. I, I get most of it on the net, you know, Google News and then a whole bunch of other sources. And um, uh, every story I see, I try to, I mean, if it's a significant story anyway, I try to get, get it from as many views as I can. But, you know, occasionally Tucker would be talking about some subjects and it was getting a bunch of hubbub on the net. And I would watch his show, you know, based on that. Hey, he's going to say something uh Something controversial tonight, so let's see, right? Will Tucker go full-on white supremacist, as many people claim? Who knows? But we'll likely get to know more about his actual biases uh, than we do now, so we'll just have to see. <laughs>